Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here today. How are you? Good, 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 good. Okay, so we're going to do, um, this week is just kind of a follow-up on the last, like, we did like a six six or seven-week series on storytelling. Um, and I've gotten a lot of questions that have kind of come in from that. Um, so I wanted to kind of keep this as an open, like, Q&A or like kind of talk through some things that came up. I'd love to hear some success stories of people who have actually implemented um, some things that we've learned um, um, and all that. So does anybody have any, does anyone want to come off and share like some success stories? We can start with the success story. I can randomly call on somebody because I know I see him watching your content. I'm going to call on Deanna. Deanna, I'd love to hear some of the differences that you've been seeing in your um, in your in your like results from your content because I've been watching you. I've been watching well, thank your you. Yeah, um, and so you've definitely made some 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 differences and some tweaks to what you're what you're saying and what you're doing. And I'd love to hear kind of anything that's been working for you. Sure. So. Um... Before it's always just been sold, you know, X number of days. And then I kind of got away from that because I was like, that's really discouraging to the buyers seeing that there's still like, we still are in a very hot market. Our listings are only lasting about 24 to 48 hours. Um, so I've tried to switch it up from, you know, the first session that Linnea um, taught. And as I started doing more storytelling, um, I found it hard, to be honest, I found it almost like invasive of their privacy. But I also found that it did help because people realized that I'm not just out here buying and selling properties, I'm actually walking a journey with people, and that I am there for them before, during and after. Um, so one listing has turned into the listing kitty corner, which has turned into the potential listing across the street, which has turned into the potential listing um, on the other side behind and on the other side behind. So six listings out of one post and then another one on the other side of the park. So, um, and it was all about telling the story. And then this is kind of the, the story of how they got there was kind of because I downsized so much and I was, I share my story a little bit, downsizing to 500 square feet, living in that and working out of it. And these people were like, why do we need a 4,000 square foot house? We have no kids left in here anymore. And so as we were sharing that story, we also shared that they were looking for another four bedroom house and now they own a two bedroom house with a really cool outbuilding. So their story changed too. And so it gave me a chance to reflect that what, what people think they want in the beginning isn't always what they end up with at the end. But I think the hardest part was overcoming the fear of invading their space or their information. But I did it and it worked. Yeah. And I, I think that you touched on a couple of things was um, A, when you when you talk about just sold within 48 hours for a hundred thousand over asking price, you're creating two pictures for not just buyers. It does freak buyers out. Buyers are already nervous about the market right now. They're already nervous about interest rates and the thought of having to pay a hundred thousand dollars over asking price or whatever it is in your market on top of a six or a seven percent interest rate is insane. That scares them. But then let's think about the sellers. The sellers are also buyers at this point. They're likely also buyers. It doesn't matter if they're buyers in your state or buyers in another state. They're also buyers. So you're freaking a seller out too, thinking that they're going to have to figure something, their entire next move out in less than 48 hours. So I think that, you know, switching the, switching the mindset from being like, yeah, it's a hot seller's market. It's a great time to sell. But yeah, that's great. It is. Yes, it still is. But I think being able to share the story behind it, I mean, the results that you have, that's incredible. 
That is incredible. So way to go. Um, and I will tell you that I, I have noticed it. So I'm like, oh, let's see what Deanna's up to now. So um, that's been that's been really, really fun to watch. So um, anyone else want to share any success stories or anything that you've noticed differently in what you in like in any feedback? I think a big, a big success for me when I started dif uh, differentiating the way I was uh, sharing my content was I just got a lot more responses from people. Like I just got a lot. I mean, my my referral business went through the through the roof. That was, not, that was not what I was expecting. I was not expecting my referral business to go through the roof. But in like one month, I got like eight referrals in one month, and they're just they're still just coming in. Referrals, 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 referrals are my favorite business. People like agent to agent referrals are my number one, my favorite because those come with those come with a backing, right? But the second is like past client referrals. Like when you get those people to want to refer you because of their story, their story is going to resonate with other people like them. So Deanna. Well, I was, I was just going to say too, if you're somebody that's still not comfortable with video, like you're still not quite there. Set Storytelling is your, like, in my opinion, your second best way to express who you are, what you do in a non non video way, but still showing pictures of the house you sold, the people you worked with, you guys at the closing, Tell the story. It's still your words. They're still getting to know you, maybe just not through video yet. So I think it's a great second alternative if you're not there yet. Really good point. I like that. Um, and to cut, kind of touching on the invading your client's privacy. So I always tell people like when I'm going into a buyer or a listing consultation, they know right away that I'm a storyteller. I just tell them. I was like, you know, at the end of this, I, it's a really good way to bring up how you're going to ask for referrals from them and ask them for a review too. It's like, you know, at the end of this, I want to be able to tell your story. I want to be able to share with people your journey of how you actually got the results that we got. Um, and, and so I tell them, right? And they know that that's coming up. I actually just had a client. This has been a fun closing. Ryan's on this call. He's probably laughing in the background. Uh, so we just had a client. And it's been kind of this... It's, it's a gift that keeps on giving. We're, we're closed, <laughs> but we're still trying to figure one thing out, right? So we have to... It's like when, it's a kind of a precarious stage. We're really not supposed to be involved, but you kind of have to have a little bit of like... You know, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So this client... His house was on the market um, when I when I he, he came from a street text ad. So there's hands down street text is my number one online platform. I can talk about that on a completely different day. But he was a street text uh, buyer. He came through. We had been talking for probably about six months before I finally went over to meet him. And we had this plan to put his house on the market, and that kept getting delayed. Unfortunately, you know how it goes. Anyway, finally put his house on the market and the house did way better than even I thought it would. Like I thought this house was going to do okay, right? But oh my gosh, I was not anticipating to have uh, through the open house. We had 50 groups of people through the open house, uh, two day open house, plus back to 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 back showings for two days. And he was so gracious. And he was like, it's okay, just sell my house. It's fine. Super, super, super gracious. He, he occupied the house. Okay. And it's really, really frustrating when you have to leave and leave and leave. But I basically told him, look, your house is a lot busier than I even I thought it would be. I need you to make a plan to not be home this weekend. And he said, okay, fair enough. So he did. We get his house in contract. Uh, we had seven offers, seven offers. Uh, six of those offers waived inspection. He chose the one offer that chose to do an inspection. One offer that chose to do an inspection. And, you know, he was like, I'm not really worried about an inspection. His house, he didn't look to me. I mean, I you know, I'm not an inspector, so I can't guarantee. But, you know, he liked, he just liked the offer. He liked that it was the first offer in. He liked that it was clean. Like there were so many things he liked about the offer, except for the inspection. They did the inspection, buyer backed out. And I was like, hmm, okay, no problem. Not quite sure. I mean, they told me a couple of things. So we had, we fixed those two things that they told us about. Uh, and then I went to the other the other offers that were already there, got him a backup offer, and we didn't have to go back to market. I got him in contract again. Buyer backed out. <laughs> Two buyers backed out. And I'm like, all right. So I was like, dude, we have to like re we have to shift our strategy. We have to do something different. Uh, so I had my inspector go out there. I'm like, what are these, what are these like eight, what are these inspectors telling these buyers? Right. Like, what are they telling the buyers? Right. Because I don't know. And so I had my inspector go out and do an inspection. And I was like, tell me exactly what you're hearing. Because now we have to fully disclose, right? We've had two buyers back out. We have to fully disclose everything we know about the house. 
long story short, <laughs> we're about we take the house temporarily off market. We're about to come back to market, and then I get him and one of the another buyer from those original seven offers calls and wants to come wants to come in with an off market price. And so we did. So we had a contract with an off market price, and it finally closed. But his journey from the time he first started talking to me to the time he closed has been up and down and up and down. Right. And I'm going to tell you, my, my, I try not to get emotionally involved, obviously, because we, we can't, but I'm just like, oh my God, are we going to sell this house? Like the only time in my career I've ever been like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to have to do. Uh, but we did. We sold it. We closed it. And so the story behind that, obviously, is look, it is not all gravy, people. It is not gravy. And it's also a story of having to tell sellers why they need to do the legwork in the beginning. Right. He didn't want to do a seller pre list inspection. He didn't want to do some of these things. Like he didn't want, he did a lot of work himself. He was a DIYer. Right. And when you do it, when you're, you're a DIYer, it's not always favorable for a buyer. So there's a lot of different stories. So I told him, Deanna, I was like, I'm going to share your story. He's like, what's my story? And I told him, he was like, yeah, that's an accurate story. <laughs> so, so it was kind of nice to be able to like tell him, like, hey, this is what I think the story is here. This is going to attract a lot of people who are like fearful. Like a lot of people think that they just they want they want to wait to talk to you till they know if if that they're ready to sell. Right? I have someone right now. They another street text lead wants. I've been talking. Like we've been we've been eighteen months, eighteen months nurturing. Finally, she's like, I think we want to sell. We want to sell in a couple of weeks, so we don't want to wait to have you over. And I'm like, this is a story. This story that I'm going to tell. Right? This is a story of why you don't wait until you're ready to sell to have someone come over and take a look at it. Because it ended up costing him money, right? Because not only did we go in lower, did we get lower than $30,000 lower, but then he had to pay for repairs, right? So there's there's money there. And then the time on the market, just so many things. My standing desk keeps falling down. It's weird. Okay. <laughs> keeps, I can see myself shrinking. It's weird. I don't know. Anyway, so that is like, that's why the power of storytelling is so amazing, right? Because, and you guys can probably relate to that. Like how many of you had to ha have had a buyer or a house, one of your listings go back on the market almost three times or two buyers fail inspection, <laughs> right? And you're going to survive. You're going to sell the house as long as you have a good... It's just about, about a matter of having strategy, right? And so like your sellers need to understand, you got to work with an agent, me, who has strategy, who has a backup plan, who understands how to navigate and think quickly and, and, and adapt to whatever changes come up. Katrina. I love this so much, Linnea. And I just had to share that. I know this has only happened because of working on storytelling. Um, I have five new transactions in the last two weeks, nine total going on right now. Busiest I've been in a decade easily. Um, and it is definitely from shifting how I'm speaking to all on all the channels and all the ways of doing marketing. Cause all of it, like you said, is all come by referral, all of it. Um, and it has been. And every single one, one of them was agent referral, the rest all sphere referral. And every single person has mentioned my videos every in some way, shape or form. So it might not have been the video itself, but the video made them think of me and made them know that I could handle whatever the situation was that was being presented. So I said, thank you for that. I love it. You guys, the other thing that's great about content is her telling shift or storytelling is this morning I got a message. I mean, he's probably trying to sell me something. I don't know. But it was a nice message because the guy has um 23,000 followers on Instagram, way more than I have, right? And so why if he has 23,000 followers, why is he reaching out to me? Because something in my content, right? And he says, Linnea, I wanted to drop by and say I absolutely love your content. I've been following your journey, journey in real estate, and the value you provide is incredible. Uh, as someone deeply involved in, in real estate, so he's probably trying to tell me whatever he sells. I don't know, but it's a good message. It's a good message. I don't care. I'm going to talk to him. <laughs> I would be thrilled to stay connected and network with you. So, you know, the thing is, like, when you guys start telling your stories, you start reaching an audience of people you didn't even think were watching you. Like my biggest, my biggest, my biggest remember, uh, the biggest thing I remember is since I started doing this, I actually had someone, um, I used to work, you know, I used to work at Nordstrom and I worked there for 12 years. I worked in so many different departments. I mean, my network from Nordstrom is it, it, massive, massive. I mean, I don't even know, like probably, probably know thousands of people that I worked with over the years. 
Um, but this particular person, she, she reached out to me and she said, Linnea, I, I've been watching this and my husband and I are having a debate right now. Let's see if I can actually find the message and read it to you. Hold on. Because it was so good. And I'm like, I had no idea. A, forgot that I felt, forgot that we were connected, right? It's one of those out of sight, out of mind sort of things, right? But on top of that, like you hear, you hear this. Um, hey, Linnea, I love all your content. I have a question for you. I'm hoping you can answer. My husband has this wacky idea. We should sell our house, which we bought in 2017 and then rent and put stuff in storage and also pay rent for six months and then buy something else when or if the market goes down. down. He thinks we'd be able to make a profit and upgrade our living situation. He thinks that's a buy low and sell high strategy. It doesn't sound good or even profitable to me, but curious your thoughts. That is a freaking powerful message. Do you know why? Because I forgot that we were connected, A. And all she did... All she's been doing is just watching my content, watching the stories and hearing me talk about what my niche is. This is my niche. This is my, this is my avatar, hundred percent. And so when you start to shift the way you share what you're doing, you start to reach more people in a way that you've probably never thought possible. Uh, Does anybody have any other success stories you want to share or any questions that came up in a whole storytelling content? One question I've heard a lot is how, how do I tell the story? Uh, A lot of you have reached out to me with your personal story. And I have to tell you, it means a lot to me um, because I, I love to hear personal stories. It makes me have a different sort of affinity for you because this is a parasocial relationship, right? We see each other on social, we see each other on camera. And then when I actually get to start seeing more of who you are as a human, I'm like, man, this is what drives you. A friend of mine the other day, she's like, I'm really, really, really struggling with my why. I'm really struggling with my why. Her why used to be her kids. Like many of you may be able to relate to this. She's now becoming an empty nester. Her kids are grown. They're about to move out, right? Her why up until now has been her kids. Now her kids are moving out, right? And so she feels like her why is starting to shift a little bit. So I was like, okay, well, tell me like, tell me, tell me like what drives you, what moves you? And she couldn't, couldn't think of it. And so I said, What I think is the most inspiring thing about you is the way you like to bring people together. The way you like to, the way that you have this social circle of like, you wanted to start a golf league for women and you did, right? People don't just do that. You don't just like go and start a golf league. I mean, not not like she was a massive golf player. She didn't play golf. That'd be like me starting a golf league. I'm not going to do that. But she wanted to learn golf and she wanted to start a golf league for women. So she did she wanted to start this uh, area, this in her area, she wanted to start this um, like real estate weekly meetup where they go and visit different local businesses like carpet and flooring and learn about like the manufacturing process and learn, get to know that side of the business. Does that, that sound like something anyone else would want to do? I don't really want to do that. But she loves it. She loves it. So I said, okay, so why does that, why does that make you feel good? Well, because I like to have a strong group of of friends. Okay. Why? (laughs) Well, because um, I didn't grow up having that. Okay. Why? Well, because we didn't have a lot of money and everyone else did. Okay. How did that make you feel? Right. So we just went further and further and further. And all of a sudden, suddenly I was like, you know, that we just went seven wise deep. Right. And she was like, no, I didn't even realize what you were doing. Didn't even realize, didn't even realize what you were doing. And so all of a sudden she's like, man, I just have this clarity now around why I'm doing this. And it's really helped her think about how to actually tell her stories, how to share her stories, right? I want to be surrounded by, by other professional women because whatever, right? So if you're trying to figure out the how, you first got to figure out the why. Why do you want to share your story? Why do you think your story is going to make an impact, right? A lot of us, a lot of us know, may, may know our story, but do we really know why our story is going to make an impact? So if you, if like, there's where you got to start. Like, I know, like, my story is going to make an impact because I'm going to find other people out there. God, this desk thing, I've got to fix this. This is like this platform that I had to put on my desk because my actual standing desk broke. So I'm like a standing desk on top of the standing desk. Anyway, <laughs> so, so um, but my why 
the reason why I like to share stories and the reason why I do what I do is because I want to connect with other people who have a deep, deep drive, just like me. And the only way to find out and the only way to find those people is to share where my drive comes from. Because when you know where my drive comes from, you connect to it. Like my drive comes from the fact that I grew up in two completely different households, different ethnicity, different culture, different politics, different uh, religion, different everything, different everything. And I had to compartmentalize weekends and weekends. I had to compartmentalize. So when you grow up and you learn how to compartmentalize, you find it very, very, very hard to open up. Like it's super hard because wait, 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 I have to compartmentalize. Right. And a lot of us probably can relate to this in a, in a sense, especially with the whole, should I share personal content on this, on a business page? You want to compartmentalize, but you start to realize that all of those, all of those experiences, right. The reason, the reason I'm so, the reason I'm so like now, like you just got to be authentic and be like in your face and share everything. Right. Is because when I learned to compartmentalize, I never felt like I fit in anywhere. I didn't fit in. I didn't fit in on one side or the other. Didn't fit in on either religious sectors, ethnicity sectors, culture sectors, anything. Did not fit in. And as an adult, I don't really care where I fit in because I fit in with my people now because I know who I am now, right? So I think like really understanding who you are and how those shape your your, um, adult life, that's going to help you understand the how. That's going to help you understand the how. How do you share it? Share little bits and pieces at a time. Right. I grew up, you know, I I dropped out of college. I hated college. But what I learned is that I am an entrepreneur. I am a hustler. I have more education, more education that I have given myself, which is way more valuable because I had to dedicate the time and energy to it. I've given myself more education than many of my friends who have doctorates. I know more. Not not that I don't want to compare. But I'm just saying, I didn't have to spend the, spend the money. Instead, I learned to make the money, right? Instead of being up to my eyeballs in student loan debt, now I'm like, okay, now I can actually make good with my money, right? So that's how you tell the story. But that's just one story. That's one story, you know? Filed bankruptcy at the age of 23. That's one story. But all of the stories start to shape into who I am today. So if you're kind of trying to figure out the how... Start with like sharing other people's stories. It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier. And then you start to share your own. Sharing someone else's story does sometimes feel a little invasive. Yes, when I first started doing it, I was like, oh my God, what are these people going to say? And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I still, I still to this day, I'm like, should I use their real name? What can I share? You know, you you still have to, you still have to like think, I still think about that, but It's also made me much more um, transparent and clear with my clients in the consultation process. So they understand, look, you found me on Facebook. You found me online. That didn't happen by accident. That happened because other people like you also found me. And you know how other people, how I know, you know how I know there are other people like you? Because I shared their story. And because I shared their story, I'm going to want to share your story. And you can ask them, can I keep your name out of it? Or if it makes you feel better, just keep their name out of it altogether. Right. So I think the the how behind storytelling is it is a hard one. It is a hard one, but just start telling little bits and pieces at a time. Judy, you can use their real name. I ask them, ask. Just be transparent with your clients, you guys, especially if you're still trying to figure out who your client avatar is and you're doing your client interviews or have not done your past client interviews yet. You need to ask them. Just be transparent. It's really easy. It's a really nice way to call a client and be like, hey, I remember when we were going through this process that, you know, this and this and this happened. Would it be okay if I shared your story? Can I use your real name? There you go. Guess what? You're not asking for a referral and you're not asking them to write you a review. You're asking them to share their story. You're, you're, you're remembering them and their success. Deanna. And to, to piggyback on that with Linnea, if you tag them in it because they've given you permission to use their name, now they're doing their own testimonial all over their own page about you 
which who do you want to work with? People like them most likely. So now that's how I got everybody to start talking in that one neighborhood because I tagged them and people were like, what? You're leaving? Oh no. And then it was like, well, how much did you get for the house? And they talked about that privately. And then they were like, you need to call Deanna. The other thing is be careful. If they're not sharing where they went, you shouldn't be sharing where they went. Like I have a couple right now that's rehabbing this house and people are, where are you going? Where are you at? Where are you going? And I just wrote in there, can't wait to see the magic happen. Cause it's not my place to say, oh, they moved, you know, don't be quick to do that. They don't want, if they don't want people to know, it's not our place to share. Yeah. I totally agree with that. So you just, you gotta, you guys gotta use your best judgment when it comes to how to talk about and talk to and about your clients, right? That's, there's no, there's no like method that's hundred percent accurate because every person's different. Like I personally am okay that if people use my video, use my face, use my name, I don't care, use it. Because you know what that's going to do for me? <laughs> that's going to bring more people to me. That's going to bring my my face to have more people's attention on it, right? So I like it. And I will shout my praises left and right, down the center to everyone that I that I love. Everyone that has made that has made a big, big impact in my life, I will shout their praises. If they have not made a big impact in my life, I do not want them to use my name. I won't do it. Like, I don't know. I had someone uh, call the other day and ask if I... They were, they were trying to sell me something. I didn't buy it. And they were like, well, do you know anyone else? I'm like, I'm not putting my name on that. I'm not doing it. I will never do that. So like, I think that it's really important to like use your, use your best judgment when it comes to like understanding what is okay with your clients and what is not. And honestly, the best way to find out is to ask them. And the more you ask them, the more conversations you're having with them that are not about buying or selling next home or sending you a referral, all the things we hate to do. Just more re- more reasons to talk to people. Unless you're afraid to pick up the phone, then we have a whole different thing we got to worry about there. But um, that is my advice on that. Okay, we have three more minutes. Does anyone else want to share any success or anything they've noticed in this whole storytelling? Nothing? Nothing? Okay. I'll share again, Lene. Do it. Um, so the I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. The other thing uh my VA and I were talking about this this morning the through fair uh in my business has become and I still haven't figured out exactly how to say it because it's not just downsizing but I'm having more conversations with my age group I'm 51 about their parents and their homes or if they've already inherited the home um then the probate. So it's a combination of probate and downsizing conversations that I'm having, or also combining households. So my family, my parents are ailing. We need to now sell two properties because we need a property together that has an in-law or duplex or something like that. So I'm pulling all that together as more of my messaging and my story and all the video content that goes with all of those conversations. And one of my clients who is 83 agreed yesterday, we're going to film the entire conversation and break it up into a series of stories. And she was like, you've been in, because she inherited five properties. And the most powerful thing she said to me was, she said, my brother, my brother gave me a community. And she said, so through, because my mom referred me to her, my mom is a home health aide. And so she's like, through your mom, through you, through your network, through everything, I feel like I have this whole network and community of people that I would never have had if I didn't, if my brother didn't give me these properties. And so, yeah, the conversations have been amazing. Um, But every one of those new transactions I have is all some variation of what I just said. And the word community, I think is really, really, really powerful. And that's the power of storytelling, right? So the the content that has for us, uh, the content that's the most engaging on Instagram, I do a little trending audio every now and then just because you got to get more reach in there, right? But I really like to tell stories. I love it. I love it. That is like my my power. I'm just like, God, I love to tell a story. And I like to tell it in little sentences, or I like to tell it through a picture. I like to, you know, there's different ways I like to tell stories. The most engaging content that we have is the stories where I'm talking about myself, by the way. 
the most engaging content that I have, people actually comment, people actually send messages, people actually like, like it, right? That is the most, is when I tell stories about myself. So the reason why that's important to know is like, if you're looking at like your content, like a sales funnel, right? Your top of the funnel, like to try to reach people, you want to do the trending, the trending stuff. Like if you know, it's like, that's your, that's your, that's going to reach people, right? But you want to bring them further down. Right. So further down, if they're following you, right, you want to have something that's going to be like, okay, what's a little bit more entertaining that I'm going to want to like, it's more engaging, right? You want to bring them a little bit further down. If they're engaging with my personal stories, that means they've already come down about four layers in the funnel. So like those, those stories about myself, about, you know, I talk about financials, financial, my financial journey. I talk about how much I love systems and why I love systems. Like that is not a secret to anybody. I love systems. System, in fact, we're actually going to do, I think the next two episodes, we'll do something about systems and how important they are. I know we've done kind of a couple Q and A's on systems, but I'll actually give you guys a little bit of an insight to actually how I build a system. I'm not going to teach you everything. But I'll give you a little insight as to how I build a system to give you nuggets so you can start learning and maybe try to implement it yourself. Okay. We'll do that. So Milu, there you go. There's our next two weeks topics right there. So she asked me this week. She's like, yeah. She's like, can I get the topics earlier? And I'm like, okay, I'll try. So there you go. Um, so um, that's what we'll do over the next couple of weeks is talk about systems. But my point is that like in, in like the way my content is a system, the way I push out content is a system and it's all intentional. It's intentional. Like this morning, we actually had a post go out and I'm like, I don't like that this picture is first. And I know that was something we didn't talk about. No one's fault. It's mine really for not communicating the expectation. Right. But then, um, the suggestion was, well, let's just put it out next week. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's a system. There's a reason I have it. I want it to, I want it today. Right. So, so your content, your storytelling is, is powerful. And then when you start to tell more personal stories and people have come down to that level where they want to engage with that piece of you, those are the people that you want in your circle. Those are your community of people. Those are the people that are like, um, going to be your, your lifers if you will. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I hope this is helpful. Um, I love that you're here. Uh, and I will see you next week. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Bye. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.